Hi, I'm going to go through the one hose test procedure with you for the reduced pressure type backflow preventer. I am Bart Starr and I'm here at the Viking 2 Backflow Training Center. <clears throat> so let's get started. First, let me talk about the reasons for doing the one hose test instead of the two hose test procedure. We would use the one hose test procedure for a couple different reasons. We could use it to uh, confirm a failure that we have. Uh, for an RP that we already did our two hose procedure on, or we can do the one hose test if we have line pressure fluctuation happening during our two hose test. Personally, I like the one hose test better than the two hose test because it's faster, it's easier to understand, and it's a lot more accurate than the two hose test procedure because with the one hose, we're just testing the RP. We're isolating the RP from the rest of the system. If you realize, during the two hose test procedure, we leave shutoff valve number one open during the entire test. So any fluctuation of line pressure is gonna affect our gauge reading. But during the one hose, we close the first shutoff valve and we eliminate any line pressure fluctuation influence. So let's go ahead and get started. We do the normal test procedure, or the test prep I should say, that we do with the two hose, and we do the same gauge prep as well. We're gonna use the same gauge. And so during the test prep, the flushing of the test ports, we're just going to connect our hoses to our test ports and begin our flushing sequence. <clears throat> our components for the RP, we have shutoff valve number one, and then over here we have shutoff valve number two. We have our four test ports. We have test port number one here on the inlet shutoff valve. Since test port number one is on the inlet shutoff valve, that tells us that our direction of flow on this RP is going this way. This is test port number two, this is test port number three, this is test port number four. We also do our preliminary steps. That's notify, identify, inspect, and observe. Notify the facility that we're there to do our test and that they may experience some uh, interruption of water service. We will identify the physical location, the make, model, size, and serial number. We'll inspect it for correct application and installation, orientation, check for any necessary approvals. Uh, also inspect, we'll make sure it doesn't appear to be modified or altered in any way. <clears throat> we'll observe for any kind of safety hazards or leaks, leaks from the test ports, leaks from the packing on our shutoff valves, or leaking relief valve as well. <clears throat> Check with your local jurisdictional requirements for this one host test. In our jurisdiction, we're only allowed to use this one host test for diagnostic purposes. So it's important to check with your local requirements. So let's get started. Let's connect our hoses to begin our flushing sequence. Okay, hoses are connected. We're gonna flush our test ports like we normally do for our two hose procedure. So we're gonna begin with test port number four and leave it run. Four is running. Three, open, two open, one open. All the test ports are open. Now let's close them all down in direction of flow. So we'll start with test port one, close, two, three, and four. That's our flushing sequence. Let's remove our hoses now. We're going to do our gauge preparation now. We're using the Midwest Model 847 five valve differential pressure gauge. We have our two bleed valves up on top and our three control valves on the bottom. We have the high side bleed, the low side bleed, and then we have our high side control valve, low control valve, and this is the bypass or our vent. 
So for gauge prep for the one hose test, we're going to open the high side bleed valve and close the rest of our gauge valves. Close the low bleed, close the low control, high control closed, and we'll close our bypass. The first step, we're going to get our differential pressure drop across check valve number one. We'll connect a test hose from test port number two to the high side control valve. Next, we'll open test port number two. At this point, we're bleeding out of the bleed line. Yep. We need to stop the bleeding. We'll close the high side bleed valve. And that pegs our gauge. Next, we'll close shutoff valve number two. Next, we'll close shutoff valve number one. For our gauge reading, we're going to make sure that our gauge is at the same level as test port number three. And at this point, we're going to open test port number three all the way eventually, but at the beginning just a little bit to bleed it down. Okay, you can see our differential gauge is starting to drop. Just a little bit more. We're going to record our check valve number one reading when water stops dripping out of test port number three and our gauge needle stops dropping and holds steady for us. A little ways to go still. Get a slight drip across our shutoff valve, I think. So let's just crank down a little tighter on that shutoff valve. That's better. Okay, we've got a check valve one value of 7.2. That's a great gauge reading because our minimum gauge reading for check valve number one is five. We can use this gauge reading for our apparent reading and the confirmed reading. Step two is the relief valve opening point. Come around this way. For our relief valve opening point, we're going to record our gauge reading when water starts dripping out of our relief valve. To do that, we're going to crack open our high side bleed valve just enough to get our gauge needle to start falling. Once we see it starting to fall, we'll back off. We won't turn the valve anymore. So let's crack it a little bit. Okay. Gauge is falling and we're waiting and watching for that first drop of water to come out of our relief valve. There you go. 
got some residual there dripping off the body. That's okay. Okay, there it goes. Right there, okay. 2.4 pounds. We're gonna record our relief valve opening point at 2.4. That's a good gauge reading because our minimum relief valve opening is 2.0. Next, we're gonna get ready to do our differential pressure drop across check valve number two. We're gonna close test port three and test port number two. We'll reprep our gauge, we'll open the high side bleed valve and leave the other gauge valves closed. We're going to leave shutoff valve number two closed, but we're going to repressurize by opening shutoff valve number one. Okay. For check valve number two, we're going to move our hose from test port number two to test port number three. We're going to open test port number three. Okay. We're bleeding out of our bleed line, so we need to stop the bleeding. We'll close the high side bleed valve. That should peg our gauge. Okay. Next. Sometimes it's good to bleed a little bit of air off the test port. I noticed when we were repressurizing, we had quite a bit of air in there. So we can just open up test port number four a little bit just to get some air out there. There wasn't much in there, but that's good enough. Okay. Next, we'll close shut off valve number one again. To record our gauge reading, we're going to open test port number four all the way. Before we do that, we're going to make sure that our gauge and the end of test port number four are at the same level. So we'll open up test port number four just a little bit at a time, bleed it down. Our gauge is starting to fall. Record our gauge reading when water stops dripping out of test port four and our gauge needle stops dropping and holds steady. So we're going to record check valve number two at 2.2 pounds. That's a great gauge reading because our minimum gauge reading for check valve number two on the RP is 1.0. For test completion, we'll close test ports three and four. Next, we'll open shutoff valve number one, slowly. Next, we'll open shutoff valve number two and slowly pressurize our system. We'll disconnect our high side hose. That's it for the one host test. I hope this test helps you out. If you have any questions or comments about this test, feel free to leave them down below. And thanks for watching.